Why 48 hours in the Mafi Coast? I fully believe you need to get a taste of the destination before diving in. When I travel somewhere, I'd like to jump in, test it out a little bit, and then plan a longer trip there. So I went to the Mafi Coast for 48 hours, and here's what I did. This is so cool. I started my adventure in Rome where we're filming 48 Hours in Rome, which is coming soon to our YouTube channel. Sleep less, do more. Sean here from The Tour Guy. We're a tour company on the search for the best activities, food, destinations, and hotels. Oh, uh, I don't know how I ended up here. We test them out for you to make planning your next trip easier and better. We're a tour company, so if you love our videos, you should definitely check out our tours. Whoa! Added our full itinerary for the trip into our blog, which is linked below in the description if you want to see all the places we visited. Major train company in Italy is Train Italia, but Italo is normally less expensive and has good departure times. We took an Italo train down, which costed about 30 euros per person, and the ride lasted just over an hour. Nothing's cold here. Most things were cold right now. Our train left Termini Station by 6 a.m., and we were at the rental car agency by 7.15 in Napoli Centrale. All right, so we're in Naples right now, which is literally crazy. I rented a car, which I'm driving. This is one of those, like, don't try this at home type situations. I'm trying not to get in an accident. If you want to drive in Naples, you can, and I, I honestly recommend it. But, like, you got to be ready to go. One thing to consider is that the Amalfi Coast Road, which runs along the coast, is very narrow and has a lot of curves. Prepare to concentrate as you drive and definitely pick up the body damage insurance just in case. I normally never purchase insurance for a rental car, but you always pick up a few scratches along the Amalfi Coast and we somehow did as well. So we were in Naples before and we drove um, up the, the highway and now we're in Sorrento. We're on the way to Bagni di Vina Divana. We're gonna go there, do a quick plunge and head to the boat which is gonna take us to Gambi. We arrived at the Bagni at around 9 a.m. and parked the car. There weren't really any parking spots, so we took some liberties here, and luckily we didn't get a ticket. I had obviously seen pictures of the area before, but I was still shocked by how amazing it was. Bonnie, Virginia, and Giovanna, take one. There was this incredible cliff in the Bani that I was able to jump off of, which was an excellent replacement for my first espresso of the day. When the we arrived at Porto di Sorrento at about 10.15. That's Sorrento. There was a parking garage right in the main piazza. The people there were really nice. We learned that parking on the Amalfi Coast normally always just costs 20 euros, uh, regardless of how long you stay. One guy even said later on in our trip, yeah, I don't really wear a watch, so it's easier for me just to charge a flat 20 euros. Mr. Dabalina, Mr. Bob Dabalina, Mr. Bob Dabalina wants to quit. You really make me sick with your fraudulent behavior. We jumped on a half-day trip to Capri with You Know Boat, who are... Awesome. So it's only 10.30 and we've already woken up the crack of dawn, got in a train to Naples, rented a car from Naples, drove to Sorrento, cliff dive at Bagni della Regina Giovanna, and now we're on a boat to Capri. Our tour is about four hours and departed from Sorrento to Capri. You did a full circle around Capri with tons of stops to go snorkeling, check out different grottos, and even jump off some cliffs, which is my personal favorite thing to do. They have a longer trip that's eight hours that even stops in Capri for four hours, which I recommend if you are staying on Malfi Coast for a longer period of time, but we had 48 hours and we wanted to do it all. The boat even included different things like a Caprese sandwich. Caprese, the word comes from Capri, so it made a lot of sense. When we passed inside, if you 
give that kiss to your girl or your boyfriend, you are so lucky to get it for all your life, okay? Amazing. <laughs> so that lasted until about 2.30 when we got back to the Port of Sorrento. We said goodbye to the boat people, jumped into the car, and headed to Positano to Hotel Eden Rock. But at dinner last night, I just found out this, these islands over here are actually privately owned. Seriously? Yeah, someone owns these islands. One of them is actually shaped almost perfectly like a dolphin, by the way. So I'm outside Hotel Eden Rock in Positano. It's an amazing hotel. It's an amazing position in Positano. Just high enough that you get to walk a little bit, but low enough where you're not going to like destroy your legs throughout the day. Um, but I'm going to go inside and check in. We'll actually pretend to check in because in real life I already checked in, but we got to film some stuff about checking in, so that's it. Check this out, dude. Thank you, Eden Rock. Aperitivo is a quintessential part of an Italian night out and is normally a cocktail or a glass of wine with some finger food. This normally happens between 6.30 p.m. and 8 p.m. For dinner, we went to La Tagliato. Basically means like the cut of meat. And it's a really cool terrace over top of Positano. It's a really cool family run operated farm that is also a restaurant. So like literally the restaurant is a massive terrace with tons of seats. A man destroyed. I even got an hour nap. I was asleep for an hour in the front of the boat. It felt like five minutes. I was so asleep. So I woke up this morning at Hotel Eden Rock. I feel so refreshed. Light came in from the balcony. I woke up to this like multi coast view. It was fantastic. Uh, I definitely recommend this place. It's awesome. Uh, they were nice enough to let me try the room for free, which is awesome. But I have stayed here before in the past and paid for the room. That's how I, how much I like this hotel. This is Positano. We're in the center of town right now. It's awesome. Okay, it's like I love historical centers like this where it feels like it's built on one massive foundation. We're gonna walk down. There's no cars, no traffic. It's really nice. Check it out. How are we going? Okay, we're going to walk down the stairs, then we're going to walk back up the stairs. <laughs> That's what we're going to do all day is up and down stairs. That's what we're going to do You get like the really nice areas, the nice views and stuff like that, but you got to work for it. Walk up, walk down. Walk down, walk up. I think it's the meaning of life, no? <laughs> So we signed up for a 10.30 a.m. kayak tour which departed from Il Duoyo, Spiaggia, which is part of the Malfi town. The beach is like below this massive cliff. And now we're gonna go kayaking with Malfi Kayak. I know Antonio for a while now, he's a pretty cool guy. He's got an awesome little business going on here in, um, in the Malfi Coast. So we're gonna go with him, he runs it. It's his business, he's also like the instructor. He does the kayaking, which I love stuff like that. It's like the best, normally the most passionate person, you know? So we're gonna go for like a three hour kayaking trip. I'm super amped up about it and it's gonna be cool. Assistente faccio bene, e Alvin sei fuori. C'è niente. The kayak tour was epic. That was close. <laughs> Antonio does all the hard work too, which is what I look for in exercise. Someone else doing the hard work for me. He brings the boats in and out of the water. 
If you are mildly athletic, you'll be fine and will enjoy yourself. It was really fun. He took us a few miles down the coast, stopping at beaches, grottos, and rock formations, explaining history and folklore along the way. After the tour, we had lunch at Lido Dei Artisti, which is like a nice restaurant with a great view. Fiordo di Furore is an amazing, magical beach along the Malfi Coast that is tucked between two massive bluffs. We made a quick stop there before continuing on to our hotel, Casa Angelina. We jumped in, got out, and moved on. If I was planning a longer trip to the Malfi Coast, I would spend at least a half day here. All right, six o'clock. This is day two, 48 hours in the Malfi Coast for Casa Angelina. Let's go check it out. So we got there, we immediately noticed how nice the hotel was. It was nicer than we expected. It was like incredible. We rolled up sweaty after a long day of kayaking. So we took showers and started to explore the hotel. The first thing you notice is like the scent that follows you around the hotel. This is so cool. I must add that Casa Angelina did give us a free night stay, but did not pay us to recommend them. And if their hotel wasn't awesome, which it is awesome, we wouldn't recommend them. But we do recommend them, because their hotel's awesome. They knew when they gave us a free night stay, their hotel's awesome. They knew we'd recommend them, because it's incredible. Thanks so much for having us, that was amazing. There's a water taxi we're gonna go grab right now, and we're gonna go to the Parata, eat there, drink some cocktails, and then come back. The hotel arranged a water taxi, which is totally the way to go, and we arrived at the restaurant, which was on the water. Il Parata is like a cool restaurant right on the water. It's family owned and operated since before Priano was built up like it is today. They also have a cool bar they built themselves. At dinner, we had a ton of seafood, including Ricci, which are sea urchin. I'm always looking for strange food, and I was excited to see they had Ricci. Yeah, points both actually. Like Also check out the review that I wrote on this Briggs carry-on bag, which has quickly become my favorite travel luggage. So our 48 hours in the Malfi Coast has unfortunately come to an end. We're leaving today, but what a way to leave. We're on the rooftop, breakfast, Casa Angelina. I mean, look at these pancakes. These like, I was expecting like regular pancakes, but this is like fine dining pancakes. It's amazing. What we've done the last couple days, we came in on a train super early from Rome, which wasn't actually awesome, but it worked out well. Bagno Gin Giovanna, took a boat tour with the Capri, went to Blue Grottos, Green Grottos, all types of grottos. I took a nap on the boat. We went to Positano. We ate at La Tagliata, which is like an amazing rooftop balcony. Came to kayak tours, which was awesome. Okay, they took us to a ton of places. Antonio was like hilarious. Then last night, epic journey. We took the boat, like a water taxi, to uh, Il Pirata and ate on like the water. It was really cool. So the next morning, we were absolutely committed to getting the most of our 48 hours, so we got up, ate breakfast, and headed back to Naples train station, but not without a stop in Pompeii. We hooked up at one of our guides at Pompeii and did a two-hour tour of what is commonly referred to as the best archaeological site on planet Earth. The Pompeii tour we took starts in Pompeii, but there's also another tour that leaves from Rome, hits Pompeii, and stops in Sorrento before returning to Rome. So if you're not going to Amalfi Coast for like a few nights, you can also do a day trip from Rome. It's long and rigorous, but it's a great option that I highly recommend. Now we're here, I'm eating kiwi, a little hungover, we're gonna go.